Compute services in Azure provide the resources that we need to run applications in the Azure cloud. Since we're talking about cloud computing, the cool thing is the resources are available on demand and you only get to pay for what you consume. Let's check it out. So what are compute services in Azure? Compute services are the services responsible for hosting and running cloud-based applications. These services provide computing resources such as disks, processor, memory, networking, operating systems, and so on. There are four primary compute services in Azure. They include Azure Virtual Machine, Azure App Services, Azure Container Instances, and Azure Functions. Although there are others too, such as Azure Kubernetes Services, AKS, and Azure Virtual Desktop. But the four that I've listed here are the primary ones, and for the purpose of this lesson, we'll be focusing on just these four. So let's start off with Azure Virtual Machine. Azure Virtual Machine is an emulation of a physical computer and under the cloud computing service model, it is classed under IaaS, that is Infrastructure as a Service. Similar to physical computers, virtual machines also have their own virtual processor, they have their storage, they have their random access memory, and so on. When you have a virtual machine, for it to be usable, you need to install an operating system on it. And the operating system to be installed here can either be a Windows operating system or a Linux operating system. Next, let's quickly talk about virtual machine skill sets and availability sets. We can't talk about virtual machine without mentioning these two. So let's begin with virtual machine skill sets. A virtual machine skill set is used to deploy and manage a set of identical virtual machines and it is used for scaling out purposes. When a skill set is created with virtual machines in it, more virtual machine instances can be added to it if needed. That is, if the demand goes up. And you can also remove those virtual machines when you no longer have a need for them. That is, when demand for them goes down. And the cool thing here is that this can be done manually by specifying the total number of virtual machine instances or you can do it automatically via what is known as auto scaling. Note that all these multiple instances that you have behind a virtual machine skill set connect to a load balancer. You might be wondering when is a good time to use a virtual machine skill set. A good example that I can give here would be for an e-commerce website with a peak period. That is, during the peak period, the virtual machine instances can be increased to meet the customer's demand. And after the peak period is over, the virtual machine instances can be reduced as appropriate. Another very good example is with people in the banking industry. Usually people in banking have this end of the month task that they run. So for them, during those times, the virtual machine instances can be scaled out using virtual machine skill sets. And the other option we have is virtual machine availability set. Virtual machine availability set is the grouping of virtual machines for redundancy and availability purposes. These virtual machine instances are going to be grouped in the same data center. This helps to decrease downtime in the case of an hardware bottleneck in the data center, such as a rack issue, or it might be that you have an update going on on a given rack, which might cause your virtual machine to be unavailable. But with an availability set, the chances of having all your virtual machine instances unavailable is slim. When talking about availability sets, there are two concepts that you need to note. One is update domain. Update domain is the grouping of virtual machines and underlying physical hardware that can be rebooted at the same time. And we also have fault domain. 
Fault domain is the grouping of virtual machines that shares a common power source and network switch. So for maximum availability, you need to deploy your virtual machines across multiple fault domains. Now, keep in mind that this might not be necessary for you, except you run an application that needs to be available 24-7 and you can't afford any downtime with that application. A good example is if you operate a big business and there is one of your critical line of business application that customers always need to have access to. Then it becomes necessary to have the virtual machine instance hosting the line of business application be highly available. The next compute service that we have on Azure is the Azure App Service. Azure App Service is an HTTP-based service for hosting web applications. This is categorized as a PaaS service under the Cloud Computing Service models. It supports multiple languages and framework, so it doesn't matter if you want to code in Java, Node.js, or even Python. With Azure App Service, the platform, in this case Microsoft Azure, is responsible for the maintenance of the underlying operating system and the language framework, so you don't need to worry about operating system and framework. You pay for the compute service that you use, and the compute service that you use are determined by what is known as the App Service Plans. The next compute service on Azure is known as Container Instances. The best way to explain a container instance is to compare it to a virtual machine. And as you can see from this diagram, to create a virtual machine, you're going to need an hardware or a computer with an hypervisor software and operating system. And if you're wondering what an hypervisor is, an hypervisor is responsible for creating and managing virtualized instances of each of the components that makes us a virtual machine and a very good example of an hypervisor is microsoft hyper-v so on your hypervisor you can start to create virtual machine instances so each virtual machine that you create will have their own operating system and that will be regarded to as the guest operating system so if i have three virtual machines i'm going to end up with three guest operating systems and you can have your binary files libraries and application sitting on each of the guest operating systems. And in the case of a container, we also need to have our hardware. We have an operating system, but you'll notice that we don't need an hypervisor in this case. What we need is an operating system, and on top of the operating system, we can have container services such as Docker service sitting on the operating system. But the cool thing here and what makes a container different is that each container does not require its own guest operating system. They rely on the host operating system to function. So once you have your container service, so you can install instances of your container service, your binary files and applications as necessary. And the last Azure compute service that we're going to be talking about in this lesson is Azure Functions. Azure Function is a serverless service on Azure. Like App Service, it supports a variety of programming languages such as Node.js, Java, .NET, and so on. So if you have a small code that only needs to be triggered for a short period of time in the cloud, so instead of creating a virtual machine, installing an IDE that you need to use, you can simply use an Azure Function for that purpose. So Azure Functions allows you to build applications without having to worry about infrastructure. With Azure Functions, you write less code and you only get to pay for what you use. When you want to create an Azure Function, you can execute them in either a consumption plan. With consumption plan, you get charged for the number of execution and memory that you use. Otherwise, you don't get charged if you're not running it. We also have the app service plan. Here, you will need to explicitly allocate resources for your functions. And in this case, you are going to be charged for the service plan, regardless of whether you're using it or not. Now, keep in mind that each of these plans have their pros and cons. 
One example of a disadvantage to each of this plan is that you are not able to connect them to a VNet. And that's the reason we have the third one now on Azure known as the function premium. So if you like to connect your functions to your VNet, then you will need to choose the function premium plan. In this lesson, I discuss what Azure Compute Service is all about. And I discuss the four primary compute services on Azure, namely Azure Virtual Machine, App Service, Container Instance, and Azure Function. I'll show you how to set up the services next. So see you in the next lesson.